Sometimes it feels like everybody is asking us for something. How do we give without feeling cynical? Around the world this week, we will read the portion in which Moshe is asked to count the Jewish people, but he's asked to count them using a specific mechanism. Each person, male or female, in a certain age group is supposed to be counted by giving one half shekel, not a huge amount of money. The rich people only gave half a shekel, the poor people half a shekel. It didn't make a difference, your socioeconomic background, there was one coin that represented each person. But there's something interesting that we are taught. Moshe initially could not understand what this half shekel was until Hashem had to show him a vision of this half shekel made of fire. Why did it need to be made of fire? Why couldn't he be shown a half shekel coin? And also, what was it that he couldn't understand? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Each person is represented by giving half a coin and then you count all the half coins. The answer brings an unbelievable insight. What Moshe didn't understand was why God would ask him to quantify and count a people using money if they were supposed to be a holy people, a people focused on spirituality, on selflessness, on bringing a light unto the nations. Why would the thing that would make them count be something as mundane, as physical as a coin? Hashem's answer to Moshe resonates throughout time. It's not that we gave something to be counted by, but rather that our passionate contributions are what make us count. We are being taught that how you give is more important than what you give. Let's take the number out of it. Let's make the rich and the poor's contribution be the same. And what decides what is a greater act of giving or sacrifice is the manner in which something is handed over to another. Imagine giving a big check to someone who comes collecting at your door, but making them feel like a nobody. Or imagine giving them a small donation, asking about what it is that bothers them or troubles them, giving them a hot cup of coffee on a cold day, etc., etc. My friends, I wanna share with you a story that drives home this interesting relationship we have with what we give and what we get. Rav Lazar Silver was once giving a class and there was an elderly gentleman sitting off on the side that kind of had this look on his face of distance, almost of upset. The rabbi approaches him afterwards and the man says to him, Rabbi, don't talk to me about religion. I witnessed in my barracks a man who had a siddur, a prayer book, and I witnessed how loads of people would come to pray and he would charge them a piece of bread in order to give them his siddur. If that's what religion is, then I want no part of it. Rev Silver took the man's hands in his own and he stroked them gently and he said, my dear sir, how is it that you see only the person charging for a siddur and I see the line of people willing to give their bread for this thing that they considered even more important. We use money as something to acquire things that are more valuable than it. That's why we spend it. It might be on electronics, a car, a house, clothing, but we deem those things more important than the money we have in our hands. Our ability to give is not limited to money. In fact, what we're learning from here is that perhaps it's actually not even nearly as important. Find something that is important to you. Find a cause which excites your heart and give with all of it. A young man came to me who found out that we were raising money for an important cause in the community. And he said to me, Rabbi, I love what you're raising money for. It resonates so deeply with me, but I don't have any extra money to give. I started telling him, it's okay, don't worry. The main thing is that it means a lot and you'd love to do if you could. And he stopped me and he said, Rabbi, I had no money, 
but I realized that I still had something to give. I canceled my cable subscription to watching the sport or the football, and I figure if there's an important game, I'll watch it somewhere else. And I thought to myself, by God, there are so many things that we take for granted that we need, and therefore we can't give them up to help another. But actually, when you see through the pure heart of someone like that, you recognize how much we have that we can actually give. What can we sacrifice for a cause that we deeply believe in? And this is not about money. We don't think that we have enough space in our hearts to give someone else the attention that they need for a problem. We think we're full up to here. We think that we don't have enough care or concern. We don't have enough joy to share when someone else is celebrating a simcha. But if we recognized how important it was for those people, quite often we'd figure out how to make more time, make more heart, make more care and concern to be able to share. Shabbat Shalom.